Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Whimsy, 10-Sentence Stories. In the Whimsy series of 10-Sentence Stories, published in David Bowles' blogs at bowlesblogs.com, we examine the essence of what makes us know life is worth every moment. And in our first story, we meet Denny, a rambler, rolling across the country. Denny the Tumbleweed, 10-sentence story number 117. First published, March 9, 2011. Denny was a tumbleweed and it was his lot to spin around town and blow through parts of the country few people ever get to see close up. Denny traveled near and far, and sometimes even to and fro. Denny was lonely. He had no friends, but he wasn't lonesome, because he always had the tactical acquaintance of gravel, sand, and the odd rock. Denny relied upon the kindness of a howling wind to propel him from scene to scenery, and he never complained when he wanted to veer left, but the wind blew him eastward. The life of a tumbleweed is the lot of death. One of the ghost who doesn't really know he's dead, for there is nothing left alive in a tumbling weed except for the hangers-on, like itinerant horse flies and feral mice looking for shelter from the blistering sun. And that isn't really living if others are just using you because you're convenient and not because you matter. And so Denny gambled along in his animate death, searching for meaning and only finding dust, looking for God and only finding the cruelty of a blue sky glaring back at him from above, and yearning for the greenery of his youth when he was rooted and strong and owned a stake in an earth that has now just become his endless pavement. The problem with being a tumbleweed, Denny whispered to himself, is that there's only spinning without substance. You can only be a tumbleweed if you're always moving and spinning away. And if you get caught, or if you die one of your thousands of daily deaths in the lack of a navigational wind, you lose all your mojo and most of your contextual magic and you become ordinary, a weed, if you will. And no tumbleweed ever wants to admit they're just something discarded and waiting to be picked up and put away. And so Denny just kept rolling, with no place special in mind, but with a mindful meaning that somewhere around there, along the rollicking plains and in the droughted ponds and alongside the cracking riverbeds, there must be another tumbleweed waiting to love him and share the stumbles. There's nothing so sad in life, Denny muttered under his breath then tumbling along in the black of a cold night, when you can't see your stem before your face, and thinking you're missing the one thing you've been waiting for all your life. Someone willing to share the ride and head in the right direction with you, no matter which way the wind blows. Denny tried to manage a smile as he skipped across the barbed wire dangling from a rotting fence post and headed into the punishing heat of the desert. Still alone, 
but always content that movement was at least a meager sign of life in the midst of his dying days. Our second story dives into the cycle of writing where joy and darkness meet to create whimsy. Write what you don't know. Ten sentence story number 113. Published February 9, 2011. Jasmine sat next to her master's knee and shared her wish to be a writer. If you want to be a writer, her master blinked, you must write what you do not know. What I do not know? Jasmine was puzzled. But master, I have read all the books. I have taken all the courses. I am taught by others to write what I do know. And now you're telling me I should not? Should not, yes, her master said. Writing what you know is familiar and ordinary, and you will be tempted to write about only your life or experience in relation only to the self. I should not write about me? Never about you. Write about what you need to know. Write about what you must discover. Write about something about which you must first find out in order to share the lesson with your reader. So their learning is reflected in your reflexive journey. I must write what I do not know, Jasmine repeated. Finding out is essential in the writing. The warning is in the showing. The master closed his eyes and dismissed her with a finger arcing in the air. As Jasmine crept from her meditating master, she whispered and repeated over and over to herself, Write with a need, write with a purpose, write with a mandate greater than how you already think. Yes, her master whispered to himself and to the rest of the listening, wilding world. In our final tale of the day, talent overtakes perception as we all sing of divine inspiration. That Lad Can Throw, 10-sentence story number 106, originally published December 15, 2010. The lad, at two years old, picked up a peach pit and threw it in a straight line against the broadside of a barn. The pit erupted as it blasted through the peeling paint and aged wood, leaving behind a hole you could look an eye through. That lad can throw, said the farmhand milking a cow in the barn, after the dusty peach pit remains settled gently on the brim of his cowboy hat. At fifteen, the lad threw a snowball so hard he broke the jaw of three kids on the playground as the dripping orb of ice skittered across five frosty cheeks. The other two only lost teeth. That lad could throw, one child mumbled through the remains of her fractured mandible. At 21, and pitching in the pros, the lad spun a baseball so firmly he shattered the thumbs of five catchers in two leagues and three divisions. Each time the thumbs were surrendered, the newspaper headlines simply read, That lad can throw. At 98, and in the dimming light of his life, 
the lad picked a hunk of chewing gum from his mouth and flicked it high into the air. The pink wad tumbled in a perfect arc and landed in the garbage can, where it met a pile of leftover spaghetti from lunch, spattering tomato sauce out of the bin and back into the air to indiscreetly spell L-A-D on the wall in improvised foodie graffiti. That lad can throw, said the old man as he grimaced and closed his eyes and dreamt of what he always saw when the darkness came to him. An object given the life of flight as it soared from his fingertips with the blessings of the heavens. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.